We are rolling. I ain't What's said that up? in a while, right? Pew, pew, pew. I listened to a couple of yeah. other episodes. And I was like, God, we always started with something really awkward or lame. <laughs> well, yeah, well, I mean, now you can actually say rolling and right. it fucking means something. And it makes sense. Exactly. Yeah, when we're like, sitting in the same room, it's not exactly, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a valid statement. Like when we're sitting in the basement, uh, you know, it, it's kind of like, uh, <laughs> that, that, that's not really. <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right. So first of all, what's up, dude? Um, I want to open with something, but tell me what's going on with you. How's your day? Dude, I, I took today off uh, basically to... Uh, give my wife a break you know she's been doing the child care and working and you know doing like figuring out his breakfast figuring out his lunch keeping him occupied trying to like do all these things keep all these things in the air while i just try to manage my work and come up like pop up a couple times like you know Hey, can, can I help? Do you need anything? Like in, like in between my meetings at work and, and right. shit. And so I just took a, a fucking day off of work, which right is kind of a misnomer. Like I took a day off of work, but I still at one point came down here and sent five emails, called the client, like did all sorts of work things. Um, but basically just so she wasn't like, overwhelmed again another day and so good for you man by the way that jacket is dope as hell yeah man it's my uh russian mobster hoodie <laughs> yeah. like, you got a whole track suit on that'd be so fucking pimp <laughs> uh, no man i got like fucking like flannel fucking pajama pants on right on oh by the way for those of you i forget now that we're doing like video for those of you that are just listening he's wearing a pimped out adidas uh like uh what do you call that hoodie uh, yeah hoodie yeah it's like a, a, it's like a track jacket kind of thing right anyway but it's well, it, yeah it's like it's like my colors man it's fucking bl like charcoal yeah. gray yeah. white <laughs> gun, gun metal yeah, yeah. Uh, no that's nice of you to take care of ash dude uh, your wife that's um dude it's I tell you, you guys are at home. You've been at home for a long time, man. Like it's, yeah. you know, my wife has worked through throughout this, and so I, I actually was home more. But so I, I feel, I feel you. You guys have been home a long ass time, man. So you got to chip in. You know what I'm saying? Otherwise, yeah. shit, well, shit is not gonna be good once you get out. <laughs> dude, I've been. I think I've been home two weeks longer than she has. Um, but. Just like she, you know, like what she was saying was, man, it 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 kind of fucking changes the game. Like if it was just like her upstairs working and me downstairs working, that's one thing. Like that, that's pretty easily manageable. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Throwing the kid into the the mix and the dynamic of a 21 month old <laughs> kid running around every day, all day. Like we both are, like you know, like we love having them around, but it's like, you know, go, 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 go all day, every yeah. day. Like somebody was like, wait, like, how, like, what do you do? Like, I'm like, dude, I got no time. Like I zero time in the fucking schedule. <laughs> I know. I'm like, dude, what do you mean? You can't record Saturday. What the, what are you doing? You going out? <laughs> You're like, nah, we, but you guys have created a schedule cause you've had to, you know, like to, I guess, keep your sanity, which yeah. is, I, I get it, man. Uh, so mm -hmm. you, you sent me, speaking of kind of uh, getting out, you, you sent me a bunch of, well, every day you send me a ton of uh, memes and shit like that. But the one that says uh, pubs in Ireland are closed until at least August 10th, pubs in Ireland. And then Plo says, <laughs> but by all means, let's open Cracker Barrel right now. <laughs> I'm like, dude, that's funny as shit. Dude, I literally, I saw that today and I fucking lost it. Like, yeah. I fucking, I was fucking cracking up because I was like, yeah. literally, if you can keep the Irish out of bars until August, <laughs> and they're really not that heavily hit, like they weren't even hit that hard. So it's, <laughs> it's, you're like, all right, if you can keep these motherfuckers from going to a bar, and we can't, <laughs> if, we can't keep Floridians off the beach, we can't. Fat asses out of Cracker Barrel. <laughs> we can't. Everybody's got to get their smoked cheddar log from 
the fucking gift shop at Cracker Barrel. <laughs> Smoke cheddar log. Oh, that's funny. Well, the other one you sent me actually totally, uh, you know, fits into to our past episodes. Um, one, and I don't want to get onto another Tiger King kick and bitch thing, but Nicolas Cage to play Joe Exotic, dude, in a TV series. And I was like, that's got to be utter bullshit. And then I saw a bunch of other posts about it, and I'm like, wow. Because we've, A, we've done, if you guys haven't uh, heard uh, or, or seen, we haven't done, or we we did a Nicolas, what the fuck, Nicolas Cage episode. And then we had kind of a little mini tidbit at the beginning of an episode that turned into a, a Tiger King kind of mini episode. Um, yeah. I don't know, dude. I, I don't think that one, I don't think that they should fucking make a film about that dude. Like don't give him any more praise, but Nick Cage, I'm going, all right. I don't, I mean, could be, could be interesting. Yeah. Dude, I, I, you know, we, like, I, I feel like Nick Cage as a human is more interesting than Nick Cage as an actor. I, I've said this on multiple occasions. Right. Uh, I said that a, a lot in the, what the fuck Nicholas Cage episode is that i i'm much more interested in seeing things about his life than i am in actually seeing any of his work most of the time um but you know i i'd probably i i'd be on board for that train wreck the only the only thing that i have to say is that it's going to be the i'm pretty sure it's it, they're licensing it and putting it together as a television show like, yeah it's a series i'm like just just put it in a fucking movie and let's be done with it can, please can we just can it just be over right <laughs> you know? dude I, I i don't know it, it could be total nonsense i mean like as far as it may not even be real it could be you know just somebody fucking with people but uh, I, I don't know man i it's uh, like everything i saw about it man it looked pretty fucking pretty fucking legit i know so, the only thing I'll say is I hope because you and I both feel that that dude's a, a scumbag and most of the people on that, that documentary or, you know, that surround that whole story is a scumbag. Hopefully they do it right. And they don't like, you know, glorify Joe exotic, Joey exotic. That That's what I hope they don't do. So uh, I'll just say that. Yeah. I mean, I hope that the, I, I think we talked about this before, like in that episode, there's like two people that were on that show where I'm like, you know, th these were good people that they were just in a shitty situation. You they were know. there for the cats, uh, for, the, for the actual tigers. Right. Yeah, and, yeah. Then, and then pretty much everybody else there was just a piece of shit. Yeah. Um, and and I, I, I really hope it's portrayed that way. Like, I hope the people that are like the good people <laughs> are, are the ones that are like kind of vindicated. Uh, right. in, in the show and and uh all the pieces of shit get get uh flushed down the toilet so to speak exactly well at the end of the you know the the extra episode on on netflix they asked him like who do you want to portray you in in a movie and i was like oh man and and like their answers were hilarious i was like one dude i, I think he's like johnny depp and i was like <laughs> dude like if you fucking look all right I mean, who who do you want to portray me i'm like oh brad pitt <laughs> fucking yeah it's the most generic you know <laughs> and then like one one was like matthew mcconaughey i think yeah. and then channing tatum was another one i was just like wow all right <laughs> that's gonna be a great movie like but now they're now they're filming a like now they're possibly gonna make a movie and i was like damn it like I know for like if they were they were ever to cast a film about my life, it would be fucking David Cross. And it would literally just be because I look like David Cross. Yeah, you do too. <laughs> That's funny. So I literally I have put pictures of David Cross on like my social media in the past or you know, sent that pictures of David Cross to people and they thought that legitimately they, they were like hey when were you uh when did you get a tattoo like uh when did this happen when like i'm like when were you on arrested development <laughs> you know, i'm like nah, it wasn't me but but thanks <laughs> that's awesome well he's also really funny so that's a good person that like that's a good doppelganger to have <laughs> yeah i feel like my sense of humor is a little similar to his too so yeah right right uh, yeah okay. I, I, I 
Well, shit, if you like our sense of humor, <laughs> you can uh, hit us up on our social medias <laughs> and find, listen to more of our uh, dad jokes and <laughs> shit. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I kind of came up, before we do this, I, I came up with an idea of why dad jokes exist. All right. Is because for years and years, dudes grow up telling just like the, the raunchiest, fucking most offensive jokes on the planet and then they have a kid and they can't fucking do that shit anymore but they still need an outlet <laughs> so they have to like instead of like you know just taming down like the offensive side of of their jokes they just have to like basically 180 that shit and just go for horrible puns and yeah. <laughs> like the PG, rated g like just yeah, so I, I think I, I really feel like that that is the evolution of the dad joke. It's f like frat guy humor just morphs into this like really bad pun, right? Big humor all the well, time. Well, clearly it must happen when a kid gets a little bit older because we we haven't uh, we haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> I mean, no. So you know. I don't know. <laughs> like I have, some, I have some bad dad jokes, but a lot of my stuff's still pretty. Yeah. Like a lot I really, of. Let's put I really gotta way. tone down the f bombs in the house. Yeah, we don't really. Well, we don't edit shit. <laughs> Mainly because I'm lazy, but two, I, I don't really know how to do it. But uh, for a while, I tried to. But I said, you know what? We're this is who we are. Like I think uh, there was some weird, uh, weird audio a second ago. It's gonna be in there. <laughs> so uh, it, we yeah. don't edit shit. <laughs> I mean, this is pretty much who we are. And, and I know our kids, of course, like I watch my mouth a little bit, but it, I still feel like, dang, at what age do I really need to watch my mouth? And I'm thinking it's coming pretty soon because he's really like watching and copying a lot of stuff now. Uh, so yeah. I'm, I'm like, okay, dad jokes are, I have a feeling they're right around the corner. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm in the same boat and I'm just like, I know, I know my kids are going to get kicked out of daycare for saying cunt. Like, I just know it. <laughs> like, deep down. Like, oh, I, I, he was saying bunt. I, I swear to God, he was saying bunt. He just can't get the bees out. Like, I don't. Yeah, he hasn't for, formulated the bee sound yet. Yeah, like. Uh, and then he drops a big old hard biatch, and you're like, oh, damn it. <laughs> you know, it, it's coming, man. It's it's around the corner, dude. Yeah, for sure. I'm going to get more. I'm going to get in more trouble for my kids' language than anybody else's kids like. right <laughs> you're gonna go uh well hey so yeah I, you know I, i'm i'm the dad and i'm gonna go ahead and apologize <laughs> ahead of time get it out of the way because <laughs> not nah, not nah, fuck that man i'm gonna let them find out on their own i want that awkward letter i want that super awkward phone call where a teacher or somebody has to call me and be like um well what did he say <laughs> well he said the b word what's the b word which B word? <laughs> Which B word? Like, there's wait, wait a minute. There's multiple. Did he did he say the T word? Like, <laughs> like wait, wait, wait. What? How, how is this spiraling? Was it a hard C or what? Yeah, like was it a hard C or was he using it kind of in an Irish inflection? Because that's okay in our house. Was he making a joke? Like, yeah. we encourage well, that. More importantly, was the kid being a cunt? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> was the other kid being a cunt too, my kid? Because, I mean, if the kid's being a cunt, it was earned. Did, did he deserve it? Right. <laughs> oh, shit. To be a fly on a wall during the first fucking parent-teacher conference. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> oh, so, anyway, shit. back to the plugging. Yeah. Yeah, if you, if you uh, whatever. Fuck it. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram at... <laughs> Based on True Events Podcast. That's right. On the Twatter, we are... Podcast Boat, B-O-T-E. Hell yeah, you can uh, watch some of our videos of our Zoom sessions and, and soon we'll, we'll have uh, actually both of us in the same room, hopefully. We're going to post those on our YouTube channel, which is Based on True Events Podcast. Colin Boat. Yeah, basically you can YouTube Based on True Events Podcast and it's not the uh, Based, Based on, on True Events Yeah, Based on True Story is the one that can, can, can get you lost. Yeah um let's see what else we got going on we got i wrote for boat still going on send us your suggestions we'll uh pick our favorite and send you a free shirt 
free shirt. Uh, what else? And we got? Pick your suggestions. Yeah. Where we drop four episodes on uh, our social media sites, or you can get us on our Gmail, uh, which our Gmail is based on true events podcast at gmail.com. Oh yeah, uh, skip right over that. If you if you don't like the social media, hit us up on the on the Gmail for sure. Um, yeah. In fact, I'll probably answer the Gmail quicker than I will an Instagram or a Facebook message. That uh, shit pops up real quick on my phone. So, um, but we anyway we put four episodes up, uh, four episode suggested suggestions up, uh, suggested by our listener base. Uh, and then, then we just let you guys kind of battle royale to see which one, uh, which episodes we do in what order. Uh, those yeah. four episodes are done uh, kind of pick of the litter style, like, you know, top suggestions, the first one that we're going to do. Uh, we actually did this week a little bit out of order just because of the kind of the timing of when things got released so uh we're kind of giving it an extra week on voting uh for the four that are up right now and i think the four that we have up right now are russian mad scientist uh jesse james uh we have uh, uh, uh little samuel little samuel little i'll say Stuart little <laughs> nope no, and then uh, the fourth one is the ayahuasca, ayahuasca, the Kentucky ayahuasca cult. Oh, ayahuasca. The H is silent. Ayahuasca. Ayahuasca. Yeah, yeah there, it's four cool episodes, and we've had, we, we already have some votes, um, and so uh, we just honestly wanted uh, more because Eric said it best uh, a few episodes ago. This is as much your podcast it is, as it is ours, and I love that, so... Uh, that that's our new motto dude i dig that that yeah. and if you don't if you don't like it <laughs> fucking change the channel <laughs> um yeah or just wait till the next episode because we're probably going to come with something completely different the next the next episode that's true and i like that we've kind of been all over the place you know we've done a, a conspiracy theory stuff alien shit uh some some really deep dark heavy shit some fun stuff um, so yeah, I liked it when we first started, I didn't expect to go this, you know, all over the place to be honest with you, but I'm glad that, and, and I love that the listener suggestions take us there. I like being surprised. So bring that yeah. shit on. Um, we'll go to Waverly once we uh, are allowed to eventually. And, uh, yeah. yeah, I think that's it, man. That's all I got, man. All right. Well, uh, I'll jump in. It's my, my episode. Um, and since we're not uh, doing one of the vote, the voted suggestions or, or, or yeah, one of the voted uh, topics yet, um, I went, I had a couple that I was going to do and, and I was going a route, but then you sent me a link and I don't know why I've never heard of this. Um, I, I, I swear I even went back and made sure like at our, I li look at all of our episodes that we've done and I'm like, did we talk about this in any episode? I hope that I didn't just completely like, you know, block it out or forget, but uh, essentially the, uh, the Harp brothers. Um, uh, no, no. Okay. So I actually, I sent that to you for a reason. Uh, that was a, originally, uh, that was on my, my list at the beginning. Um, and it was a topic that I was actually going to do. We actually uh, had workshop that like, like, episode four right like um that was like literally like gonna we i actually had that on my list for me to do before we were given each other topics no shit that's how long that's been around well it popped up on something and i was like oh shit man i'm gonna throw this at him and give him maybe an option to uh, well, go outside the box a little bit maybe do a cool episode so yeah, well, that's good, man. That's why that's like, there. Yeah, that's dope, because, I mean, well, literally, and we've said it before, man, if you're sending me shit, there's a chance I'm going to do it. <laughs> so, and, and you kind of know me well enough. And honestly, what, what caught my attention immediately was it, it said something about the, the Hart Brothers, uh, America's first serial killers, or the original serial killers, or something along those lines. And I was like, yeah. well, shit, if this isn't up our alley... I got to dig into this. And then I started digging a little bit and I was like, all right, this is a cool story. And it takes place or, or took place 
you know, in our backyard uh, for part of the story. So I was like, man, I'm going to do it. So this is the topic. Cool, uh, man. Uh, I almost asked you because I was like, what if he's going to do it? And I was like, I think he, I feel like we would have talked about it. But so, sorry. Well, technically, if it was number four, then shit, that was far enough back. This is, this is free, uh, <laughs> free for all. Oh, no, no. It, it actually, like, uh, when I saw it pop up on something, I w- when I was doing research um, for something else, I, it, I saw it pop up, and that's why I sent it to you, um, kind of like as a placeholder. Uh, and I had originally planned to do the episode, but, uh, and actually, I had planned to do the episode, and then we started giving each other options, and it went on my list, and then you kept throwing fucking audibles out there. <laughs> so my list kept growing and yours kept shrinking because I always pretty much always stayed to the suggestion. You did so, too for a long time you did and I just I just couldn't do it. So, but I, I I've since uh I have either misplaced my list or whatever. So occasionally things will pop up and I'll see it and be like, Oh yeah, I had planned on doing that episode. So <laughs> I think your your notebooks around here somewhere actually. Probably. Anyway, all right. So the Hart brothers. Um, I, I took a. There's a lot of of websites about these guys. I opted not to watch a documentary this time, and I didn't listen to any podcast this time. A lot of times I'll listen to little snippets of podcasts and see what angles they're taking and try to go a little bit different. I didn't um, because it's a pretty. There, there's a tale, and it's a long ass time ago. So. You know, um, I feel like all the websites pretty much had the exact same story, you know, just worded a little yeah. differently. So I, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm taking a little bit from each of them. Um, I like this intro, though. The Grizzly Tale of, and I don't know how to pronounce it, M-I-C-A-J-A-H. I think it's Micaja, if I'm not mistaken. Thank God his nickname is Big. <laughs> so... <laughs> That makes my life a little bit easier. But Makaija will say Big Harp and Wiley Little Harp is steeped in both blood and mystery. Prowling the American wilds in the late 1700s, the pair were said to have slaughtered a shocking number of men, women, and children until at long last they were apprehended. Today, many consider Makaija and Wiley to be America's original serial killers. So um, I had actually not heard of these guys. Um, so uh, I was excited to, you know, do some research on a, on a serial killer or serial killers or, or a story that I was completely unfamiliar with, which is pretty cool. Um, and I think they were born in North Carolina and I read somewhere that it's so long ago that there's always like a couple of little different theories and people are saying this. Um, I think they were, somebody said that they were cousins, but essentially they were, they were brothers. Uh, that's the majority of everything that I read said they were brothers. So, I mean, in some places you can be a cousin and a brother at the same time. And a lot of this took place in Kentucky, <laughs> Tennessee, West Virginia. So yeah. Uh, but anyway, I believe they're brothers. Um, uh, <laughs> as America's first recorded serial killers, um, they, you know, well, how does it say it? They definitely started what would become a long and twisted history of people notorious for killing sprees. Um, but don't think that that level, of, uh, don't think that the level of atrociousness attributed to serial killers was a gradual incline. The Hart brothers were not only the first serial killers in America, but also two of the most gruesome. Now we've covered some serial killers and we've covered some gnarly people. I think that this is more of a, I wouldn't call them that gruesome, but they're fucking monsters. They're horrible. So we'll get into it. Um, It's said that they killed like 39 people, but I read a few places where it was way more than that. I've seen the number 60. Um, I think what it ended up saying is that they actually confessed to 39. Um, It says no one can say for sure what the true number was. Um, They had a signature move. (laughs) I hate that they call it that, like they're fucking wrestlers. (laughs) <laughs> yeah well which do i mean think if you do think about it man like think about how much more interesting serial killers would be if they had to like have like theme music every time they like came yeah. in it was like you know 
or like Mortal Kombat. Finish yeah, it. Like, <laughs> like a fucking theme song just started playing. You'd be like, oh shit, somebody's about to be fucked. Oh snap, it's done. Suplex is coming. Um, all right. If uh, their, their theme, their signature move, I mean, if a body was found with the guts ripped out and an open chest cavity filled with stones, then it was a telltale sign that the Hart brothers committed the murder. So obviously with the stones, you, you we've done enough that, research. Go ahead. That seems pretty, that seems pretty fucking brutal, man. Well, no, like, they're, they're brutal, but we've, we've covered like the worst of the worst dude I, my dude the, the the bar with ripper crew and some of those people are set so like gnarly high that i'm like so desensitized that i'm like all they did was cut them open and put stones in them and then they sunk to the river you know <laughs> i'm like eh. <laughs> but yeah, yes it's no, brutal yeah it, it's brutal and, and i'm not a monster it, it's brutal okay <laughs> it's fair <laughs> um, Originally from North Carolina, Makaija Big Harp uh, and Wiley Little Harp were born as Joshua and William Harper around the 1770s. I got a I got a friend named Joshua Harper, uh, which is funny. I'm like, dude, I'm going to give him some shit. Um, as they traveled across the country through Tennessee, Kentucky, Illinois, and Mississippi, uh, they killed whenever they were provoked. So one thing about these guys. Why the say, fuck they change their names, man? To like Makaija, is Eze- Ezekiel Makaija, right? <laughs> like something really difficult to pronounce. Thank God they got a nickname, Big and Little. Um, yeah, or just stay with like Josh, <laughs> Joshua and William. Yeah, yeah. Um, that, that, Josh and Bill. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the one thing I was gonna say about these guys is, um, and and I think I'm gonna read it a few times, but. A lot of the people that you've covered, especially, and I've done a few, there was always, I think last time we talked about this, and the women, it seems like, there was always a motive, and it was usually money, um, right. you know, or, or, or whatever. These dudes, it seemed like it was, and I think they used the term bloodlust. Like, they, they just, they were mean as hell. Actually, you know what? I did listen to kind of a, it was a, it was a video, but off of a podcast where one of their relatives, and I don't know how far down the line, um, was telling kind of a story that he asked his parents and he's like, nobody really talked about it. Um, but he, he basically said that these two dudes were just mean as sin. They were just mean ass brothers who enjoyed hurting people and killing people. So these were not their, their motive, although they did some robbing and stuff, which we'll get into a little bit, but it was mainly just cause they were just mean as shit and just st- kind of reminded me of, uh, the ice ice man. Yeah. Iceman killer like that dude remember he was just brutal just because he was just he was just a killer you know yeah like he just he just hunted homeless people to fucking get better at killing right like, oh god so fuck so it, it kind of reminded me of them um so okay during the american revolution captain james wood provided an eyewitness account that stated the hart brothers had joined a loyalist gang who took advantage of wartime lawlessness they would the gang would steal destroy property rape and murder all the other sites, uh, and a lot of this is off of, um, sorry, I need to turn my ding off here. Uh, a lot of the um, websites called that gang like a rape gang. I was like, Jesus. So apparently that's what they were known for more than the, the stealing and, and whatever. Uh, Captain's Woods da- Captain Wood's daughter, Susan Wood, was later kidnapped by Big um, uh, Harp and wound up marrying him, becoming Susan Wood Harp. Little Harp would marry two. Uh, he married a, a minister's daughter named Sarah Rice. Now, hold on. Let me just make this very clear. They didn't marry those men. The women, those women did not marry those men out of choice. Those men literally kidnapped those women, raped them and threatened them and essentially kidnapped them and made them their wives. Like, so this was not a, <laughs> you know, it's very Harvey Weinstein based. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. It, 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 it's sad as hell and it's horrible. Uh, during those early years, um, accounts of the Harp brothers' exact whereabouts and activities uh, were murky. Um, it is estimated that ni- in 1797, was the, uh, that was the year that their murder streak began. 
the brothers were living in Knoxville, Tennessee. Um, they fled down or they fled town after they were charged with stealing hogs and murdering a man found by the river. Um, in the first, in the first in instance of uh, their signature characteristic, the man was cut open and weighted down the stones. I didn't laugh because of what happened. I, they're calling it the signature character, you know, whatever signature move again. Um, in between their criminal activities, the brothers managed to have children with their wives, and the families would travel together from place to pe uh, place to place. Now, I read a bunch of times, and a lot of people mentioned this, um, that they would have children with their wives, but then they would kill the children because they were just a nuisance. Yeah, not nice, not nice gentlemen here. Um, their next stop after Tennessee was Kentucky, where they murdered a peddler and at least three out of town travelers. Um, they actually, um, one of the first images when I was researching these dudes uh, showed a picture of, um, uh, what is it called? Mammoth Cave, I believe. Um, and where he, they had killed uh, some young slave boy and by literally just like bashing his head against a tree. Uh, like, I, and they're, they're like they, a lot of the stories that I did read, and I'm not going to get into too many details, but it was, it seemed like it was for literally no other reason other than you're annoying me, you're in my way, or whatever, you know. Um, which, which you're an inconvenience, an inconvenience, you know, yeah. Um, a local innkeeper linked the killers with the murders, uh, that's after the, the um, Kentucky murders. Um, and notified the authorities who were able to catch and arrest the brothers along with the rest of their, their gang. Uh, but their jail time didn't last long as the group managed to escape. They actually were in jail in Danville, Kentucky. Danville? I don't remember. Danville? I don't, yeah. Um, Danville? Danville. Um, and I don't think this article talks about it, but I made some notes. Um, the dude that actually got them arrested, as soon as they escaped, guess who the first person they went and killed was and so uh, yeah i'm like dude these guys were were also apparently they, they held a grudge um soon after yeah soon after in april of 1799 james gerard uh it could be gerard or gerard whatever the governor of kentucky placed a reward of 300 dollars for the heads of each heart brother meanwhile the newly freed heart brothers continued to kill and spent the summer doing so, leaving a trail of dismembered bodies from Kentucky back to Knoxville. Uh, the brothers were indiscriminate when it came to their victims. They murdered men, women, and children. They killed a bunch of kids. <laughs> Thanks for the, the sidebar. Like, you had to come out of the story to be like, they killed a bunch of kids. Well, it's like, well, I don't think I maybe there's one little detail about a child they killed, but I didn't want to get into that. A lot of them did. My last episode, I literally said, next time I'm not going to do any kid killers, you know, or like child murder or whatever. And so I was like, ah, damn it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I thought I was steering a little bit clear of that, but um, they killed a girl before they cut her body into one inch strips. They slaughtered a family and a and the family's slaves, a massacre that took eight lives. So they like literally snuck into this house when these people were sleeping and then just massacred them, massacred, massacred them. Um, like there's no need to do that. I mean, the, like they're literally, so, but a lot of these, you know, serial killers always, what was the FBI description? It was, uh, there was always a break or like a time lapse cooling off period there needed to be a cooling off period it had to be more than i think three or more with a cooling off period is considered a serial killer yeah so and we'll we'll talk about it a little bit after because it's a pretty short volley but um i don't know about the serial killer or the america's first serial killer title um because it wasn't all the same way and but anyway um they um the hart brothers uh appreciated the opportunities for financial gain, but their true motivation for killing, se killing seemed to stem from bloodlust. Um, near the end of the summer, uh, it was uh, 1799, while in Kentucky, Big Harp's daughter would not stop crying. Oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> trigger warning. I'm yeah. not laughing because I, yeah. I think it's funny, 
I'm laughing because you literally just got done saying you weren't going to talk about child murder. And then you start this sentence and I'm like, oh, here comes some more child murder. Dude, and I'm laughing because of the exact same thing. Because I like literally, I was going to almost leave this part out. And then I started reading the sentence that I wrote. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> like, damn it. But trigger warning. This is the little bit. out. Of, so let me restart that. Uh, his daughter would not stop crying. Out of reflex, he smashed the child's head either against a tree or a wall, killing her instantly. It was he could have just said he killed her. Well, you could have just said he I, killed him. I could have. You're right. <laughs> um, it, look, if I have to have this shit in my head, I feel like it's only fair that I share the, the knowledge with the world. Okay. Okay. It, was, well, it, it was the one, it was only, it was the only one of his murders he expressed remorse over. I don't buy it. But um, on August 24th, 1799, the brothers were finally tracked down by the authorities who had been searching for them. Um, they were told to surrender, but they tried to flee instead. In the process, Big Harp was shot twice and then subdued with a tomahawk axe. He confessed to 20 murders as he lay there, dying. Um, Moses Stegall was one of the members of the posse who caught Makaja uh, and Wiley Harp. He was also an avenging husband and father whose wife and child were killed by the Harp brothers. While Big Harp was still conscious, Stigall sawed off his head. I kind of like that part of the story. It was like, cool, at least there's one little bit of like vengeance in there, like on the good side. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so so Big Heart basically got caught um, and then the dude sawed his head off. It was with a knife too. Like, phew. but I mean, yeah, you kill my family, I'm gonna be pissed. I can see some crazy shit. Dude, it's the 1700s. They're sawing your head off with anything. It's not gonna be a pleasant situation yeah, you're right and it won't be one slice yeah that's true yeah um i always feel like that's the one thing i don't, I don't love like westerns and stuff like that but uh any of like the, the cowboy and indian times or like you know these sort of wild west where everybody's armed it's always real brutal you know what i mean like i would have hated to live in those times like i just you know always on your guard and shit like i don't know man um well that's why the life expectancy was like 25 right yeah like damn 40 you're fucking old man yeah right um when the gang leader samuel mason was shot uh, i'm sorry uh, i'm sorry let me let me get back i skipped one in a seemingly unending slew of lucky breaks wiley hart managed to escape he rejoined the gang uh it was called the mason gang um whatever he and his brothers had previously spent some time uh with those guys uh, little harp took on an alias name for four years while he ran the gang. Uh, when the gang leader Samuel Mason was shot, Wiley Harp tried to claim the reward that was out for his head. <laughs> However, he was soon recognized as an outlaw. So literally like the gang member was wanted by the cops and there, or by the whatever, and there was a reward. So he literally, if, I don't think he said it on this one, but it was alive or dead. If I think is how I read it. And he, cut the dude's head off if i'm not mistaken i could be mixing up stories but he took it to the law enforcement and then they recognized him they're like you idiot you're one of the brothers <laughs> and then they fucking arrested him <laughs> he was soon rec recognized as an outlaw uh one last capture escape recapture took place so he actually escaped and then got caught again finally in 1804 the last harp brother was executed by hanging concluding the tale of the Hart brothers and America's first serial killers. <laughs> okay. So I've always had a problem with this. Like when it came to, you know, like if you watch old Westerns and things like that, like, you know, it's always like the shittiest drawing ever oh, on the, like the one. Poster. The one yeah. <laughs> and people are always like, it's him. <laughs> and I'm just like, well, dude, like, shave your mustache. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Like, like it'd be easy to hide from the law enforcement if they're like, going based only on your this drawing. <laughs> like, I feel like there were so many people that got caught back in the day as, like, wanted criminals where it was just like, dude, change your name 
go to a different town and grow some different facial hair. Like, what are you doing? Right. No we're, we're, known portrait of Makaija Harp exists from life. An artist's likeness created from its physical description mentioned in historical records is like the only picture. I mean, <laughs> dude, it could be so many people. Yeah. <laughs> you just like, I'm just like, that was like the golden age of getting away with crime as long as you were like decently intelligent. But from this story, like it doesn't sound like, like even if you get caught, I think there was like an 80% chance you were going to escape anyway. Right. Yeah. It, it, you know, I mean, the, like, the, there's, there's a picture of, of a, uh, I don't think it's the actual jail in the jail, uh, in, uh, Danville. It was a reconstruction, I think of the jail, but it's like literally it's the size of the basement. Like, you know, my basement. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, yeah, I mean, if one cop probably, I'm sure they were drinking according to all the movies and everything I ever read, goes to sleep, there's a good chance you're going to get out. <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, I get why, why escaping was so, was so easy back then, I guess. I mean, it's not like locks were really, like, super intricate back in the day either. And, like, right. how many times have you seen a Western where, like, their buddies just ride up with a horse and tie ropes around the bars and just yank the door off? And they're like, or they can just go inside and shoot the one cop. Like, like it just like I, I was. I'm always like so like astonished by anything where it's like we got them. I'm like, yeah, for what? Like ten minutes? Right. And how do you know it's the right guy? Like, exactly. I would, I would have literally mm -hmm. like been that guy that just like goes around and I'm like, oh, I, I'm mm -hmm. Billy the Kid and do a whole lot, a whole lot of like horrible shit and then just. <laughs> You know, like shave my beard and then be like, "Oh, I'm the, Billy the Kid, that guy over there." But, <laughs> <laughs> like, that's totally not me. That ain't me. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I'm looking at some of the places in Kentucky, uh, like, and I don't, I'm not familiar with some of them, like Russellville. I was curious of how close to Louisville it was. I mean, Cave Hill or uh, Mammoth Cave is is like an hour and something. Um, cave in rock which is right near the ohio river so i mean it's pretty crazy to think you know that all of this stuff happened now let me i can go rambling about all the details of kentucky people listening are like i don't live in kentucky i don't know what the fuck you're talking about <laughs> so yeah. but back to the serial killer claim or whatever um would you consider them serial killers i don't you know dude we've we've had this conversation on yeah. in multiple episodes across multiple platforms of what a serial kill like you know what would justify someone as a serial killer um like we i think i don't even think it's part of the fbi's like little deal i don't think it has to even be like ritualistic in nature right like i literally think it's like three or more with a cooling off period and you're considered a serial killer so, like, basically by the FBI standard, I would say that, yes, they are. To me, I feel like a serial killer has to have – it has to be, like, somewhat ritualistic. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like – Yeah. Like, there has to – like, to be something related to, like, I only kill this type of person for this reason. Or I kill everybody, but I kill them in this way. Or right. – I, the dog told me to kill everybody or like whatever the fuck it is yeah, yeah, yeah. to me this is more like spree killing and mass murder than it is like it, it like like just for reference sake would you call like in in the movie natural born killers would you call mickey and mallory serial killers or were they spree killers mass like so like murderers right so I personally would not call these guys or Mickey and Mallory Knox serial killers because for me, serial killers is when they kill people, a certain MO or whatever, usually um, the same way. And then like you said, there's a cooling off period. They and these brothers and, and Mickey and Mallory Knox were just literally any, I mean, think about the in, uh, natural born killers. They're riding in the car and they're just like bicyclers, bam, bam, bam. Yeah. you know just because it was fun you know like 
they're spree killers or just mass murderers. Yeah. Like for me, these guys had no target. There was no reason other than they were just mean, probably pissed drunk half of the time. And they were like annoyed with everything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I personally don't think that they're, they would, I wouldn't call them a serial killer um, specifically. Like, I feel like the, the idea of them like instituting the statement of their signature move or whatever yeah. is kind of a way to tie it in that they, they are serial killers. Um, I'm, I'm really not trying to water these guys down as being any less horrible than they are. They did. Right. I mean, they did have the, their disposal method of, you know, disembowelment and then filling the body, the body with rocks. I mean, I guess that could be considered somewhat ritualistic or uh, well so here's the thing about that though is that and i know i started the episode by reading that every single article i read kind of prefaced it with this was their i hate to say it their move their signature move but i mean that's what they call it um but really they didn't talk about it except for like three times like that's how the people died. Now you'll notice this episode, other than that one slip up about the daughter, I didn't go into a lot of detail about killing people and, and, and the way that they killed them. But a lot of times when they, in fact, one of the part of the story I left out and I didn't mean to, but when they were with one of the gangs or whatever, the gang basically told them to get out because they were like, you guys are too crazy. People would just be like traveling and they would literally take them hostage hike them up to the top of the cliff, get them naked, and then make them jump off. Like, that's how they were just killing these people. And the gang members were like, y'all are too crazy. Y'all are too mean. You got to go. So, like, there was, they didn't, they killed people other than, unfortunately, multiple times there was a, a child that they did bash their head in, uh, the, the young boy against the tree. So they either caved your skull in or they disemboweled you, seemed to be their two kind of, go to but they also killed people by pushing them off of cliffs and in other ways you know so they were equal opportunity employers <laughs> right well exactly. but, but so, so i mean i guess i think that time is kind of the the thief in this conversation um because i imagine it had it been more recent like had this situation happened even a hundred years later like in the 1800s I feel like there would have been a lot more information about these two guys other than like, I mean, there's, there's a fair amount of information about these two guys anyway, but I feel like even in the 1800s or like fast forward into like the 1900s, like you, you would have heard, like, they'd have been like, well, I was, you know, I was killing for God or I was killing for the devil or, you know, there's always some fucking bullshit that, that these motherfuckers always kind of come up with is their yeah. justification line for why they do do what they do like i was born bad you know or i was born know, bad that's right like the fucking fake bullshit that got attributed to uh hh holmes where it was like i was born with the devil in me yeah that's right you know, like, <laughs> like all that shit like it's like it's justification man like yeah, it is. Uh, to well, me, I, I to me, there's. I feel like they're spree killers. Like I, I feel like, but some like the more detail that you have given as as we've gone on. Yeah. Like, to me, spree killing and mass murder inherently would be not about dragging the situation out, whereas like. It seems like like they filleted the one girl. Yeah, like, like in little strips. Yeah. Yeah, and then you know, then they're they, they're they're feeding off the fear of these people fall, jumping off of cliffs, and you know, I I don't know, man. I th- the 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 more detail that I've gotten, the the I I feel like they're just serial killers that are with a have a high body count, which yeah. generally tends to be fairly rare um but it's unchecked because of time the time period that it was going on again a poorly drawn wanted poster 
<laughs> it's true. It, it's an easy and, and the ability to go state to state and like when other gangs are so afraid of you that they tell you to leave. <laughs> um, yeah, like, yeah. Nobody's gonna fuck with these guys. Well, I guess technically, I mean, you, th- nobody says that a serial killer has to have the same exact method of killing every time. That, that's their their method was random, and whatever yeah. was probably easiest. You know, it's like the berserkers; they kill you with whatever the hell they had. <laughs> yeah. Um, so to me, I feel like the, this the ritual. To me, that that it that needs to exist for it to be a serial killer. Whether that's something that the FBI agrees on or not, I, I feel like ritual needs to kind of exist for it to be a serial killer. And for these guys, I feel like the ritual was that fear. Like they they fed off that fear and that power of right. you know be you know being this horrible monster. Yeah, you know, yeah. they, living as living as the living on the world as the boogeyman. Yeah, right, right, right. Well, so big. His nickname was Big because he was like six four. Dude was huge, big yeah. dude. So I mean, you know, it's one of those group mentalities too. Little brothers going, dang, dude. You know, so they just literally walked around and did whatever they wanted to whoever they wanted. Yeah, uh, yeah. And I have a feeling if Big, the 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 older brother, wasn't and the bigger brother wasn't, you know as mean it probably wouldn't have gone on the way that it did you know you've got a partner in crime literally well you know it it also kind of brings to mind like what was was big like the lenny of the situation like (laughs) he was just like the muscle like none of the brains and like the other the younger brother was like the one who was like yeah let's kill him see let's kill him see <laughs> yeah i don't know but yeah they they both killed equally from everything that i read so i don't know but still it's funnier to think of it the way you said it <laughs> um, yeah, I, left, I left it out and i don't i don't know if it's really important to the story but i think it's interesting like they actually uh they joined the british troops to fight to the carolinas so they were actually in the in the war um I think I read somewhere their father, uh, their father. Oh, dude, don't start with this shit. No, no, no. Their fathers were siblings who immigrated from Scotland and were the Tories who fought for the British during the Revolutionary War. Um, so I can't remember how, how it went because I, I read it and then they talked about it on one little audio clip. I think they killed their father. Um, like... I can't remember what it was for. They hung him in the yard and in, in their front yard, I think, and possibly their mother too. Um, so they started and it wasn't, no, you thought I was going to go was because of their parents. <laughs> yeah. Like I was going to, yeah, no, no, no. You're, you're going to give me the sob story about, well, they, their, their dad was <laughs> slightly abusive he beat about, him. Yeah. about yeah. bad test scores and no. he didn't make the baseball team. So <laughs> Well, don't, and don't, my facts could be messed up, but the way I'm thinking, the way it's coming back to me is that their father basically joined the, the, the wrong side of the, you know, of the war. And so they literally hung him in their yard. Uh, and, and then his mo- their mother just, I don't know, whatever reason, but, um, so the only reason I said that is because no, if, if they, if you had to put a title on it, it'd be born bad. <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? Not, not anything having to do with their parents. <laughs> So. so they fought for the British during the Revolutionary War. Yeah. Man, these yeah. guys are just charmers, huh? Yeah, right. Like uh, you got a whole you got a whole country like fighting a war against uh England and they're like, "Nah, we're going to go with England. We're going to go with England." Well, then they actually left the war uh and then started uh hook oh god. Uh, then they got in cahoots with the Indians and just started literally robbing people. <laughs> uh, hold on. After the British fight for the Carolinas, after a year, they grew bored and aligned with the Cherokee Indians pillaging the region. <laughs> they exacted revenge on the aforementioned uh, captain by stealing his daughter, Susan. Oh, so that's what, that's how it tied in. So they were in <laughs> with the British troops. They got bored, left, joined the Cherokee Indians, started pillaging the region. Their captain, 
I think it was her captain of the army, went back and kidnapped their daughter and made her marry him. And then killed all the kids that she had for him. Yeah, dude, they're, yeah, <laughs> they're, they're pretty fucked. Um, by, the, by, the way, by the way, it's Native American, you insensitive fuck. Yeah, I'm reading. That was from. I should. I should quote the fucking site. You I'm, I'm being an asshole. I'm being an asshole. But from the guy who dropped two retards in a couple episodes, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, I. I mean, I. I am Native American to some yeah. degree, so I. I can be. Uh, You're I, I, I can call them engines. Oh God. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, dude, they're, they're pretty, it's a kind of a cool story. And that was probably the shortest volley I've ever had. And that's what, why all of a sudden, like, as we're talking, things are popping up in my head, like, oh shit, I left that out. Cause I, I usually, you know, will read a full article. I didn't want to do it this round. So. Yeah. No, I, I mean, uh, I, I feel like, like I said earlier, man, I feel like time's a thief in this story. Um, I feel like, uh, a lot of the details of, uh, you know, some of the motivation or, I, you know, things get watered down, things get magnified, things get, you know, changed here, there. Uh, I, I would say that a vast majority of everything that was attributed to these two guys was, was probably fairly accurate. Yeah. Um, like, I'm not saying that, oh, you know, they're, you know well that's why they always said he it was either a tree or a, or a wall we're not sure but the head was definitely smashed because it's it's you know it's a long ass time ago and there's no there's no videos you yeah know, it's written down and some you know the, dude, the, the important point was the head was smashed that's on, the important what, part, right? on what it was smashed doesn't really matter yeah yeah <laughs> but it, it does it, the, the story literally sounds like if michael myers and jason Voorhees kind of like decided to go for the tag team belt and uh yeah just started destroying everything in their sight it does seem like that it like who the people like groups would tolerate them kind of like like i mean we just did the berserker episode like so, like, the British Army probably, like, tolerated them because it was like, all right, man, we can just, like, let these guys loose, and they're going to fuck a whole bunch of stuff up. Right. And then at some point, they were like, well, we can't control these guys. Like, like we have no control. And so they probably were like, oh, uh, yeah, we're not, we're not doing <laughs> – no war today. And the guys yeah. were like, fuck Sorry. this war out. And then, yeah, then they went the over the chair. Then, then they join up with the Cherokee, and the Cherokee are like, "We don't even speak this language, but these crazy fucks just keep walking around with us, killing people, they just keep stealing <laughs> shit for us." <laughs> yeah, yeah, like I, I don't know, you know, the the it, I, I hate to say it this way, but like the funnier part of the story would be if there was like this horrible stigma about the Cherokee Indians in this area because of like the murder and and things along those lines it was literally not it they did nothing it was just these two guys killing everyone and they were like it's the indians like no no man we don't know these two fucking guys like the white dude (laughs) that dude's like seven feet tall he's taller than everybody in the country it's him he's the bad guy (laughs) look at the look at the picture yeah, the, the drawing, <laughs> the drawing, <laughs> the like drawing. That that's where all the wanted posters came from. It was the Cherokee Indians were like drawing him on cave paintings and like <laughs> send, like sending it to town. Like, please well, come a, get him. Yeah. <laughs> For real, they just won't leave us alone. They keep following <laughs> us around, man. <laughs> that like literally, it could have been a concerted effort of like the British, the Indians, and then like everyone in a five state area could have all gotten together and just hunted these two guys down. Yeah, but everybody was like, "Ah, eh, no, we don't like each other, so we're just gonna let this go on." That's funny. <laughs> well, that that does definitely put a lighter topic on, and honestly, or, or a lighter spin on a dude. They were they were horrible. I mean, like. <laughs> 
for some reason, like I read that story and this feels like a lighter episode where the truth is when you look at the details, like they, they did some horrible shit, man. So I, I get why they have that title of America's possible first serial killer. I mean, I don't know who else. I don't think we've done a, a story uh, that predates this. I don't, I mean, as far as like a, a killer, like a, or killers. No, I mean, I don't, I, I don't think we've got anybody that's gone back this far. We've kind of touched on Jack the Ripper um, and H.H. H. Holmes, which were both kind of in the late 1800s. Um, True. Except that Holmes is not Jack the Ripper, and this is they, they are considered America's first. So not, yeah. You know, yeah, so that could be the. But no, I mean, but that's the eight, that's still the late 1800s. These guys oh. are in the 1700s. Oh, yeah, right, 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 right. So, um, I mean, yeah, I, that that could be a hell of a challenge episode, you know. Uh, yeah. g- going Find backwards on fucking Find on something. serial killer. But see, I feel like serial killer is kind of like a a blanket term that that gets thrown around these days to kind of make uh, to soften the blow of the crazy of humanity. Like right. back in the day, it was just oh no, that's just what they do like people just fucking kill the fuck out of everybody that's dave he kills a lot of people <laughs> yeah and, and actually dave got employed by the king so he kills a lot of people and it's completely legal yeah, you know what i'm saying like, like yeah like, i mean <laughs> not not to go back to this again but like i mean the berserkers like they were literally given their high ranking in that culture because of their brutality and because of their bloodlust and their fact that they just killed indiscriminately. Right. You know, is is probably around the, the late 1700s that, that it got to the point where, you know, people were like, Oh, maybe we should start like calming this down. <laughs> right. Killing 50, 60 people in a lifetime is probably not, a yeah. good look for the human race right i wonder how uh did I, I wonder how old they were when they died like how old they actually lived uh, they're probably like 27 that's what i'm saying i'm wondering like i'm like wait i wonder how long they lived because i feel like their their killing spree we'll say didn't go on you know like they didn't and, and here's the other thing with the serial killer terminology if we go by the fbi's term they never took a cooling off they never took a break yeah so i mean but i'm okay if to call them i i get why people that i mean one it makes for a good headline america's first serial killers i mean i dude just honestly from the way that i mean you kind of kept the details a little bit more pg-13 which yeah. in, in in most of the cases yeah. Um, which I appreciate. I, I think it's it's, it's nice. rare, right? I don't know. I'm just feeling. <laughs> well, feeling it, was a, it was a nice levit, levity to the to the episode, um, yeah. but with the details that you were you have given, I mean, I I I, I started off as spree killer, mass murder, and now I'm just I'm like serial mass spree killers, <laughs> right? Like they they get all the terms. They get them all. Yeah. You know, so, all the terms, man. So, let's see. Uh, Big, Makaija Big Harp, born Joshua Harper, <laughs> was, and I laugh because, again, it's, it's a buddy of mine. Um, he was born in six, 1768, died in 1799. So, he was 31? No. Yeah. Yeah. So, I was close, man. What did I say? 28? 27. <laughs> some, and Wiley Little Harp, born William Harper, uh 1770 died 1804 so he 30 so he so th- he, yeah, he yeah so, by three years well and he he was born five you know what six years before the revolutionary war started so okay that means that they, that means that they killed the dad when the younger brother was like six or seven yeah if that's true so don't quote me on that but i feel like that's i I, that that's one of the things and i feel like i'm I'm an idiot i should have probably 
found out and dug a little deeper on that, but for whatever reason, I didn't. Um, let's see. You are you were frozen for a second there. I was like, okay, <laughs> recording no, over. Probably, episode finished. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I probably just wasn't moving actually, because I was. I, well, no, because I was thinking about something. Like, because that's one of the things that we do is like we literally talk about you know, hey, so-and-so, he killed his first person at 12, or, you know, they, you know, did their, they made their first criminal activity at, at age nine, or, like, going back to kind of, you know, see where the, where the rampage starts, and if that's the case, like, th that kid was, like, six or seven. What, the youngest was, like, six or seven when the Revolutionary War started, and then that yeah. means, like, yeah. All sorts of shit broke off from there. So I, I don't think that then there that's probably not accurate what I said because if they were if they hung him, I don't think a six year old's gonna hang a grown ass man. So maybe well, yeah. his father got hung and they were there. Well well yeah, but his his brother was older than him. His brother was older than him by all right, so let's say let's say it wasn't you know right. he, he could have been the older brother could have been 12 or right. whatever. And he was big, but so anyway, it, it I, I could be wrong on that. And I don't see any, the, where I heard that was from the, um, the, the relative who wrote like a book on this whole thing. And he, he's been doing all, and he asked his great grandparent and whatever. So that was a story passed down through his family. And he was the only one that actually mentioned that. Now I'm remembering it because none of these articles say that. So, you know, <laughs> uh, that's yeah, probably why I left like it out. That's probably why I left it out because I remember there wasn't anything else about it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Except that little. It's kind of like, Kind of like H. H. Holmes, great, great, great grandson being like, "Oh, he's Jack the Ripper." Like, no, yeah. dude, no, he's not. Like, shut the fuck up. Like, well, you know, I didn't even think about that. He's barely a mass murderer in our country. Like, he didn't. He didn't span the globe killing people. Like, right. You know? Well, dude, so, Jack the Ripper. Uh, what's the? What's the? Um, the last lady that we did. What was the episode? Uh, the last lady that we did. Yeah, the uh, Alyssa. No, the baby murderer. Oh, uh, Dyer. Dyer. Amelia Dyer. Yeah, she. Some there, and I. I don't even think we talked about it in that episode, but because uh, it was so ridiculous. But somebody actually considered. Uh, there was a theory. Somebody said that she was actually Jack the Ripper at one point. <laughs> I'm like, so hold on. <laughs> Like there's no, a million people no. Jack the Ripper. Dude, no, I, I don't agree. I actually had this conversation. It's for another episode, but uh like I don't even know that we do Jack the Ripper. Like I, I could probably sum up Jack the Ripper conversation here in about five minutes. Um but th th there's there's actually been a, a fairly intense conversation back and forth about who, who Jack the Ripper is and I I don't feel like there's a very big question mark around that anymore. I feel like uh, the them keeping a question mark around it helps sell books and helps tours keep going. And who's actually thought to be Jack the Ripper um, paints a group, a certain group in a very bad light. So that's the reason it doesn't uh, get put out as the actual killer um except in kind of like on fucking blogs or on this or on that but the the evidence against who people think is jack the ripper is actually very compelling and wow. it's not a I'll be it's with not you. dire well I, no I, I agree with that but i'll be honest with you i don't know anything about jack the ripper other than what you know what his style of killing was and kind of where it happened because i was never drawn to that story for whatever reason and i think there was so much hype around it that i was like eh, i like digging in the stuff that, pe that maybe we don't know so much so i've never even really done or you know i didn't watch any jack the ripper movies so i would love to actually hear that episode uh, if you think you can nail it in a mini episode then maybe i'll extend a challenge to you but dude i, dude, I, I can, can I, can, 
I could get the I could get the Jack the Ripper story in and out in five minutes. All right. Well, then maybe that maybe that's what I'll do. <laughs> yeah, you can give me a mini challenge. Give me a mini challenge episode. I'll give you the fucking Jack the Ripper story in five minutes. All five right. minutes or less. Uh, but it was funny. Like I, I will tell this story before we end. Uh, Kyle Kinane, he's a comedian. I think he's hilarious. But uh, he went to England to do uh, some shows, and he went on the Jack the Ripper tour. And it, he, the way he described it is very similar to the way that I described the, the ghost tour of New, New Orleans, Orleans. Where, where it's like, you know, a large group of people, and you're all walking around. And he's like, you're, you know, everybody's walking around the Whitechapel area. And he's like, you got the guy leading the tour, and he's like on the microphone or whatever. And he's like, and on these streets in the middle of the night in the late 1800s, Jack the Ripper killed five prostitutes. And Kyle Kinane like looked at his buddy and was like, five? He's like, dude, there's five people getting killed by one person in our country right now. Like, what the fuck is this? Like, why is this scary? <laughs> like, he's like he's like no offense but this is bullshit yeah, this is lame that's funny <laughs> so that's funny. not shit i know everybody like there's assholes out there with the fucking jack the ripper tattoos just like there's people out there with the fucking uh albert fish tattoos and and shit like that i'm just like come on guys like Dude, there's a band called Albert Fish or something like that that tours and they, that's like their their shirt and their album cover. And I'm like, fuck you. Like, yeah. dude, like I enjoy, you know, learning about horrific stuff, but I'm not a fan of these yeah. fucking monsters. We hate the fact that this stuff happens. Uh, you know, th there's a there's a, a level of, of fucked that I don't yeah. get. <laughs> for somebody who's getting a tattoo of albert fish <laughs> jesus yeah, yeah. like i i mean i feel like there you know that's like get a like l ron hubbard tattoo before you get an albert fish tattoo like right. l ron hubbard's a terror was a terrible human being as well <laughs> but like you know it's it's the same equivalent like what the fuck are you doing <laughs> right oh shit all right. Well, uh, to end uh, to end this episode, we're we're basically telling you guys don't get tattoos of any of the topics that we cover. <laughs> we're yeah. not, we don't condone that shit. We, we're we're not backing any of these as good choices. No, we're not. <laughs> so, all right. Well, yeah, man. I I guess it ended up kind of somehow being a lighter topic, uh, which or maybe that's just the mood we're in. But I'm glad because uh, I think that's why I opted not to go some of the details because every once in a while I need a break. And honestly, I think it's possibly because of the last topic I did too. Uh, that that one was pretty hard. So I, I'm glad yeah. that we didn't we we were able to lighten the mood at least a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Well, Although your Berserker episode technically was in between, and that episode was awesome, and it was brutal, but it was awesome. So yeah, I mean, you did pick this episode though. Like, I well, I mean, I sent you a link, but you did not have to do the episode. <laughs> so, well, but I figured, considering the fact that we do a lot of true crime, hence we are a truish crime podcast, and we do a lot of serial killers, how could I pass up on a, a what is technically known as America's first serial killers. You know especially what I'm especially yeah. attributed to this area. Yeah. Well and the fact that absolutely and the fact that I saw Kentucky and all these I was like, wow, okay, so this is like this is cool. Um now I will say that I as I was looking around, there wasn't a ton because I always look to see how many podcasts have recently covered it. You know, and if they've done if they released it last week, maybe we should skip it this week. But but I there was not a lot done on these guys. So for whatever reason, because it's an interesting story. Um, it, it's, you know, I guess there's just, like you said, there, the serial killer seemed to have gotten a little bit more gnarly uh, since then. And so, you know, not, not to, I think you said not to, you know, water down what these guys have done, but um, the details. Yeah. Are definitely, well, and also there's way more detail uh, in more recent crimes because of the, the proof. Right. So, right there's only so much detail that they can they can put into a story that old so that's probably why yeah so i get it i mean it you know it it is good to know that 
that the roots of our serial killers come, you know, you know, so from a a place of of true mass murder, you know. Right. <laughs> Sweet, thanks, so. thanks. Yeah, all right. Well, shit, man. Um, I guess next week we're gonna do one of the voter choices. Yep, I think so. So you guys vote. Get out there, vote. Get out there and uh, vote. Get out there and vote. It don't matter which one, but yeah, I think right now Russian mad scientist is in the lead. I believe. I thought it was Jesse James, but it could it could be Russian mad scientist. I kind of hope it's Jesse James. Maybe I'll fudge the numbers so you have to do Jesse James and I get to do the Russian mad scientist. <laughs> no, they're all going to cool. I'll do whatever, man. Yeah. I, know, I know we had one person. I, I, I don't remember who it was, but I, I, I do know that we had one person that was like, they like voted for two on, on one and then voted for the other two on the other. He's like, I just want to hear all four episodes. Yeah, like, I'll, I'll, I'll give you one guess who that is. <laughs> yeah. It was it was Mr. Andy, covering all the Andy. Days. Yeah, it was Andy covering all the days. So yeah, yeah well, um, at, at least this at least these four. There's not a baby killer because we actually had a vote for baby killer, Sonia, and I gave you a bunch of shit for it. I was like, dude, you're the one person that was like baby killer. I'm like, dude, yeah. no, <laughs> yeah, like I. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I think I think I, I personally am uh, avoiding baby killers like a fucking plague right now. Right. Uh, I, I had another. We we had a suggestion for uh, a plague episode. Um, I'm not saying I won't do it. I'll do it, but uh, I don't know that I'm there this week well, or next week. We, we still got the chick, the chicken that in coop one. The, the, cool. the chicken coop I'm one. Not, or whatever. Yeah, I, I I don't know that I, I I'm I'm there to put it in the suggestion pile just yet, uh, <laughs> since we're currently living through a plague. Right. Um, exactly. But you know, I mean, I think my 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 thought process behind it is everyone's kind of inundated with that shit all over the news all the time. So I I just didn't really assume that people wanted to turn on our podcast and hear more about plague. Yeah, but you know what's funny about that? And I noticed it immediately, and everybody else did. As soon as basically we, we got quarantined and people started going on lockdown, guess what popped up on Netflix? Outbreak, pandemic, like all these movies yeah. that were like, <laughs> I was like, holy shit. I was like, who's staying at home watching this, scaring the shit out of themselves, dude? <laughs> like, that's like, fucking... a lot of people. A lot of people. Yeah. So, anyway. So, all I right. Know, maybe, maybe we'll do it, man. Maybe I'm. Maybe I'll call an audible and I'll I'll do the fucking plagues. But hey, you do what you want. Get out, get out there and vote. Get out there and vote. All right, man. That's it. Um, I'm just first serial killers. I'll talk to you later, brother. Good shit. Later, bro. Yeah. If I can figure out how to turn this off, I'll say. <laughs>